Have you ever wondered why the Shaolin Masters are not the most straightforward opponents to beat? Or what could drive them to seek isolation in mountains or temples for months or even years? Well, you've come to the right spot. In this video, we discuss the famed Shaolin Masters' early upbringing, which included harsh training, a rigorous diet, and the incredible powers they developed as a result. So be sure to watch the entire video so that you can learn facts about the Shaolin Master that you didn't know before. Here now, 15 Reasons Why No One Can Beat a Shaolin Master Number 15. Education Shaolin Masters train in advance throughout their entire lives to become skilled. Every youngster at the temple receives a traditional education and training of Chinese culture and Buddhism. They also perform a variety of tasks to preserve the temple in good condition and learn many things by doing this. They've been immersed in endurance training and bodily workouts since childhood, and that would be fatal and nearly impossible for an untrained person. In modern society, children typically spend their days roaming, playing games, or eating junk food, whereas the Shaolin monks spend their early years wrapping their bodies around trees, tightly squeezing them, trying to pull them out, and stretching themselves in perilous positions. These ultimately help them develop a level of dexterity and flexibility with odd methods like hitting their necks with sticks, their early training is rather ludicrous. They provide a significant challenge to their opponents in battlegrounds due to their early hand-to-hand -hand combat training, and there are several levels of their expertise. Typical Western youngsters boast about completing the monkey bars or the cartwheel, whereas future Shaolin masters can accomplish similar things effortlessly. Number 14. Strict Diet Obviously, the first question that springs to mind when you consider their intense training is, what do these individuals eat? A Shaolin master follows a standard diet, yet their food is unique and superior to others. With rigorous rules of Buddhism, they have a humble yet mighty cuisine, which is nothing short of amazing. The Shaolin monks lead a rigid lifestyle, getting up every day at 5.30 in the morning to chant, which is quite an unusual habit for regular children. A vegetarian diet is another habit that helps the monks to future success and also helps them to live a life that's long and active. This cuisine is oriented in Buddhist ideals of peace, purity, and simplicity, just like every other aspect of monastic life. It's crucial to keep in mind that a Shaolin monk's existence is centered on spirituality rather than sports or pleasure. Modern children are not accustomed to this type of cuisine, and would simply say no to their meals with many pleading for pizza or chicken nuggets. The customary food of the monks consists of grains, vegetables, and fruits that are all found within the temple's grounds. They break their fast with a bean soup called Eight Treasures at 6 o'clock in the morning, and lunch is served at 11.30, consisting of tofu, rice, and five to six different vegetables. Noodles are served with black or yellow wheat bread for dinner at 5.30 p.m., which is a part of a strict diet. They avoid drinking tea or other liquids with meals to encourage easy digestion, and they often consume a small amount of dairy and don't eat meat, fish, or eggs. Strontium is a mineral that is abundant in diets that are heavy in vegetables, which may be the reason why these people are so strong. Due to the Shaolin diet's high levels of fiber, low levels of fat, and high levels of protein, it reduces the risk of diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, and cancer and is regarded as being one of the most healthy diets that's available. Number 13. Fearless The main obstacle that prevents us from advancing is fear, from engaging in our passions to living a full life. So how do Shaolin masters overcome it then? Well, since overcoming fear is considered a dangerous skill to have in one's mental toolbox, the children are taught how to do so from an early age. Master Dejan is one example of a person who has conquered fear. Shaolin Shanyui, which is located on the summit of Shaoshi Mountain in China's Henan province, is what he's been learning and practicing. At the edge of a sheer cliff, 1,512 meters above sea level, Master Dejan practices martial arts there. He chooses to practice martial arts in this perilous position despite the risk of falling to his death. In order to develop his heart's balance and to practice regularly, and although many people might experience fear and worry during such workouts, his emotions are strong. He was terrified of dying and must confront this fear if he wants to get over it. So, to face death, he walks upon the edge. 
He faces his fears, acknowledges them and deals with them and then lets them go. This is the golden rule for overcoming fear, and Shi Heng Yi, another Shaolin master, provides some explanation, claiming that while our brains are capable of manifesting good things, they can also instill fear within us. We're able to regain control once we realize that the fear just lives in our minds. The secret is to transition to a positive frame of mind rather than to allow the fear to intensify. Number 12. Raise their body temperatures with the mind. Have you ever wondered if anyone could warm themselves up with their own thoughts? Well, although it may sound absurd, monks can genuinely increase their body temperature only by using their minds. In a distant Buddhist monastery in northern India, many monks sit pleasantly, casually attired, and unperturbed by the startlingly chilly conditions. The monks don't seem to mind being in situations that would make the typical person shiver uncontrollably or would even cause death. So, how is that even possible? Well, as they practice a certain type of yoga known as Ji Tumo outside in the snow-capped mountains, the monks' body temperatures rise sharply as they focus on their meditation, with some of them reaching as high as 17 degrees Fahrenheit. Over several hours, each monk was obliged to dunk three sheets in cold water and drape them over their shoulders during meditation. The one who dries the most sheets before sunrise wins other competitions that are held during the Phrygian Himalayan evening. It sounds skeptical, but Harvard cardiologist Herbert Benson has cleared up this uncertainty by discovering that Tibetan monks have extraordinary control over their oxygen intake, body temperatures, and even their brain waves. The monk's body produces enough heat while meditating to allow cold, damp sheets to be placed over his shoulders in a chilly room to dry. A 2013 study by Maria Koznikov confirmed many of the findings of Benson's earlier work, which included practitioners' capacity to elevate their body temperatures to feverish levels by fusing imagery and specific breathing techniques. Now, I wish I could raise my body's temperature with my mind, since it would allow me to significantly reduce the cost of my heating bill. Number 11. Iron Head Breaking things has been a staple of many martial arts expeditions for a long time. Metal, however, stands out amongst all the other materials in terms of breaking skill. Imagine for a normal person, it would be exceedingly difficult or even impossible to smash an iron bar or run an electric drill over one's head, but for Shaolin monks, these activities are commonplace. Shaolin pupils begin beating their heads against a wall a few times per day after wrapping their heads in layers of soft fabric to prevent brain damage. The goal of this exercise is to increase the student's internal power and ki by hardening the top of the head and forehead and the rear of the head as well by strengthening the skin, muscles, and bones. The frequency and force of hits gradually increases as training goes on, and every 100 days after the first year, three layers of the fabric are taken off. Once all the layers have been removed, students then move on to the second phase of training, and then they start smashing their bare heads against stone walls, expanding their practice to include sleeping in headstands, hitting their skulls against one another, and attempting to crush some stone slabs. The pressure over time causes the skull's bones to change shape. Using an electric drill to the side of their head for 10 seconds without even breaking the skin is also an astonishing feat that was accomplished by Shaolin Kung Fu master Zhao Rui. Shaolin fights employ the iron head technique to take down competitors. Number 10. Throwing Needle Through Glass Many extraordinary feats of human endurance and strength were performed by the Shaolin monks, an ancient Chinese order. But the most astonishing of all may be less well known to you. That's shattering glass with just a needle. But you may be asking yourself, can one really break glass just by throwing a needle at it? Shaolin monks have a remarkable talent there. One of the Shaolin 72 arts, the needle through glass move, takes more than 10 years to perfect. It involves concentrating one's energies before throwing a thin needle through glass like a dart. The Shaolin's seemingly incomprehensible action has been caught on camera by a potent slow-motion device. The slow-mo guys are seen in the web video holding up a balloon behind a piece of glass. A Shaolin monk collects his might and throws a dart-like needle at the glass, and amazingly it crashes and pops the balloon. It sounds amazing, even though it may be an unpleasant tactic to use during a fight. Number 9. Diamond Finger 
Shaolin masters train every part of the body, which also includes the fingertips to make them as powerful as tree branches. They press wooden planks and trees at an early age to develop strong fingers and begin practicing heavy strikes as their training continues on. A considerable amount of strength must be developed in both hands' fingers. Once mastered, the fingers will have the strength to handle more challenging skills, such as the one-finger handstand or the diamond finger. The diamond finger, which involves training the fingers to transform into deadly weapons in and of themselves, is one of the most challenging and impressive techniques that's learned in Chinese martial arts. It is a component of hard qigong, a form of exercise that aims to make the body incredibly resilient to traumatic impact. The training includes pulling out rusted nails, hitting trees until you can rip a hole in the bark with a single stroke and hitting stones until you can make them crumble. A skilled user of the diamond finger technique in battle can use one single finger to puncture an opponent's chest and harm his internal organs. Former Shaolin monk Hai Ding performed a one-finger handstand as a demonstration of his diamond finger ability. Number 8. Walk on Water You might be surprised to learn that a master of the Shaolin temple can actually walk on water, which is extremely unusual for the general population. By honing their light body technique, they can pull off this amazing accomplishment. Young monks are required to carry backpacks while walking around the edge of a bowl that's full of water as part of their rigorous training regime. The water is taken out and more weight is added as they go, and they can then walk on water, hang on delicate branches without breaking them, and even walk on grass without making it droop. Thanks to this technique, Running on water is different from running on land because you have to exert all of your energy to try and maintain balance while moving forward. Without any assistance, it would be impossible to run or stand on water, and one Shaolin monk by the name of Shi Le Lang accomplished this impossibility of running on water. On 200 plywood planks put over a reservoir, he ran 125 meters in a world record. He needed to move rapidly and step extremely soft in order to complete his accomplishment, which required the use of these 200 floating plywood boards. Xi La Lang has previously accomplished the feat, and his most recent crossing of 125 meters broke the previous record of 118. When it comes to being able to walk on water, we have to consider if that ability is voluntary or a requirement and if the latter, swimming would be challenging. Number 7. Superhuman Strength Shaolin monks possess superhuman strength, incredible flexibility, and a very high pain threshold, in addition to all of these bizarre skills. They also have incredible muscles that make them frighteningly strong and difficult to defeat in a fight. To acquire this terrifying power, they engage in Chan Buddhism, a particular kind of Buddhism where monks practice mental Chan and physical Quan for their entire lives to regulate the qi, an energy force, through meditation. To live out this idea, one needs to be disciplined and conscious. This allows them to completely phase out pain. It's highly challenging and unique to see children wrap their entire bodies around tree trunks and maintain that position for hours on end. You would find it difficult to believe that a human could even bend in such a manner for such long periods. A Shaolin monk can achieve extraordinary feats of mental and physical skill that seem impossible, such as breaking a concrete block with his bare hands. Another horrifying fact is that monks can hang themselves from their necks without suffocating. These monks practice for several hours every day, and these amazing feats of strength require effort, training, and mental fortitude. The monks have earned a reputation as supreme Buddhist fighters thanks to their incredible flexibility and pain tolerance. Number 6. Iron Crotch Now I ask you, do you know anything about Iron Crotch Kung Fu? Well, I hadn't either, but it's a training method known as a body hardening or iron body Kung Fu. This unpleasant sport is not an ordinary martial art by any means. Rather, it involves deliberately striking your body in the most sensitive places with severe punches. A dangling log with a steel plate covering one end is what the iron crotch kung fu is made of. The log is raised into the air and then swung squarely towards the practitioner's crotch or genitals as he stands at one end of the log with his legs wide open. It takes a lot of meditation, controlled breathing, and mental control to complete this seemingly painful practice. It's intended to simultaneously strengthen the body and the mind, 
and the iron crotch is mastered by injuring oneself while using special breathing methods, also while accepting blows to the body's weakest areas. The style includes numerous attack methods in addition to tactics for fending off pressure, discomfort, or blows to other sensitive places. In the town of Juntun, just outside of the historic Chinese capital, the practice of the iron crotch has existed for hundreds of years. Wing Chun is another popular martial art in this area. However, over the years, it's also constantly lost population. There used to be about 200 people consistently practicing the iron crotch kung fu, but now there are just five. People invented this activity as a way to protect themselves from what would otherwise be a fatal blow in battle by desensitizing the most delicate areas of their bodies. Number 5. Iron Shirt Iron Shirt cleans the bone marrow and strengthens the muscles, tendons, bones, nerves, and cells. The Shaolin masters have spent countless years conditioning their bodies to endure blows from projectiles of various shapes and sizes. They forcibly massage the covered portions of their back, stomach, and their chest after wrapping them in a few layers of soft fabric. They then create a small trench underneath of a horizontal bar that's hung outside before filling it with fine sand. For three years, the monks trained by hanging from the horizontal bar by their arms and plunging to the ground using every part of their bodies. When they're ready, they then take the layers of soft cloth off and begin hammering the entire body, first with a wooden hammer and then with an iron one. The monks use iron techniques to give themselves the capacity to withstand powerful strikes by focusing their chi's inner force and directing strength to the area that's being struck. Some of the methods like routines and sleeping on a bed of nails are absurd, and iron shirt experts can protect themselves from powerful assaults with sturdy, even sharp weapons. Number 4. Iron Bull The extremely severe technique known as Iron Bull is equally as brutal as the other ones on this list. Scraping one's stomach is the first step in this training, initially using the fingers and palms and then blades. Now, if you believe that to be the end, you are gravely incorrect. They then continue scraping with a knife after the skin becomes hard and then strike it hard in the core. Hammers are utilized once they're no longer in pain, first with wood and then with iron. There are more sophisticated training techniques such as knocking a bell, in which a monk takes a blow from a battering ram that's made of a log that weighs hundreds of kilograms. It's said that practitioners of the iron bowl technique can take blows, cuts, and even stabs to the stomach, all without breaking their skin. Number 3. Expanding Awareness Shaolin monks are not just incredibly resilient and robust. With a little bit of practice using their chi, they can also strengthen their vision. Once they've received a thorough training, they can then use their eyeballs in an arc of at least 180 degrees effectively giving them the appearance of having eyes on the back of their head. The practitioner may do vision training, and they also assert that they can intensely and immediately project chi by detecting the slightest movement very rapidly and perceiving colors more vividly after receiving defocused eyes, which seems impossible. Although it is innate, developing it will require a lot of practice, hard work, and perseverance. Speed and Agility the Shaolin have long had a history of secrets. Basic kung fu exercises and routines are an efficient approach to increase the joint's flexibility and the rear leg's suppleness, which are the sources of energy that make Shaolin monks so swift and agile. They can generate a lot of power when jumping and switching between dynamic stances because of this base. Kung fu is an excellent thing to preserve mental fortitude and uniting it with physical fortitude as well. The years of effort, endurance, patience, and dedication that go into enhancing their key energy and fortifying their bodies is not instantly evident, and consequently a Shaolin master emerges that is physically and intellectually deadly in both their offense and defense. Number 1. Pain Threshold For humans, suffering is fundamental and unavoidable. The minimum intensity at which a person begins to detect or sense a stimulus as painful is known as the pain threshold. Shaolin monks do seemingly painless and effortless feats, which leads to their amazing feats being commonly categorized as stunts, fabrications, special effects, and hoaxes. The years of effort, endurance, patience, and dedication 
that go into enhancing this energy and fortifying their bodies is not instantly apparent. They strike trees with their fingers to build tremendous strength and bash their heads against each other to harden their skulls. They do this with complete ease as they race up and down stone stairways on all fours without tiring out. So how do they manage all of this? The pain threshold of a Shaolin monk is their most deadly weapon. They view pain as a natural part of their bodies and don't feel it when they meditate frequently. They have no concept of pain, and since they first enter the monastery, every day has been filled with training for the mental and physical by learning to control the qi energy. The monk's usage of qigong causes them to have an incredible pain threshold and superhuman endurance. Qigong is a traditional Chinese exercise and healing method that includes breathing exercises, meditation, and physical movements. By doing this, they can release tension and heal wounds, making their minds as sharp as their violent methods.